and welcome to this tutorial on how to make Mu Shang Yu slash Wei Wuxin's match from the Untamed. Before we get into the tutorial, I have to tell you that I did not record on how to make the pattern for the base of the mask, but I drew it step by step. I hope you can still understand on how to make one through my drawings. To make the base of the mask is very easy. You just have to measure the distance between your pupils. You can either do it by yourself or ask someone to help you. When you have done that, you take a piece of paper, make two dots in the center with your measured distance. Then you fold the paper in half and cut holes where you made the dots. The size should be just big enough for you to look through it. Then you just hold the paper on your face, not tight, just hold it. Ask someone to draw the base of the mask for you. It doesn't need to be perfect, you just need a sketch so the mask will fit your face. When you're done, you can redraw it, but just do it on one side because we're going to fold the paper in half and cut it out so the mask will be identical on both sides. And that's how you quick and easy make a pattern for your masks. The material for the base of the mask is an EVA foam with a thickness of 5mm. You can use needles to pin down your pattern. I used tape because I was too lazy to go grab my needles. But needles are like so much easier to work with, so I will recommend using that instead. For the cutting part, we're gonna use a knife. Then we're gonna find a pattern again and start drawing all the details the mask have, but just on one side. So go find lots and lots of pictures of Wei Wuxin where he wears the mask. There is some details on the nose and forehead that can be quite difficult to figure out, therefore I decided to keep mine the simple way. I redrew the eyes because I thought they were a little bit too small. I just put the pattern back on again and drew the new shape, and then I cut it out. You're gonna need a heat gun for warming up the mat so we can reshape it. And you can't use a hairdryer since it will not produce enough heat. And now for another explanation through drawings. After you have warmed up the mask, you are going to put it on your face and add pressure at the temples, at the inner corner of the eyes, alongside the nose and at the nose tip. This part is a little bit hard to do by yourself, so ask someone to help you. Keep adding pressure until the mask has cooled down. The best part about this is if it didn't succeed the first time, you can always reheat it again and start over. Now we're gonna make all the details. I prefer to work with one piece at a time. But if you prefer to cut everything out in one go, you do that. Do what's best for you. The material we're gonna use for the details is a foam with a thickness of 1.5 mm. Then you're just gonna draw and cut out all the details. Remember to sharpen your knife once in a while. It's gonna make the work so much easier. Once you have drawn and cut all the details, try lay them on the mat to see if everything fits. It can be quite hard. I noticed that the detail under the eyes and the water drops on the nose is three-dimensional. Of course, I also wanted mine to be that, and a similar way to make it is to use a glue gun. Before making them, the glue gun needs to be extremely warm, so wait some extra minutes before using it. It's up to you if you want to do it or not. If you do, please be careful and try not to burn yourself. Put the pieces on some folded tape. It will prevent them from moving around and it might prevent you from burning yourself. This is how it looks when the glue has cooled down. It's time to glue all the details on the mask. I used this super fast plus glue because I was told that you will still be able to move the pieces into positions in case you slip up. You can't. As soon as the two pieces connected, they stayed together. You couldn't move them, you couldn't separate them. And that was really, really stressful. If you're not confident enough on not to slip up, I will recommend on getting some glue where you're able to move the pieces in case you misplace them. I use this metal pin to apply the glue both on the mask and on the pieces. And since this glue dry like a snap with your fingers, I only glued a small section at a time. Then 
this piece was a little bit long on one of the ends, but I fixed it with a nail scissor. Then can be quite useful also because it has a round shape which a lot of our pieces have. When you have to glue the eye pieces on, do it from the outer corner of the eye so it connects with the cheek piece. When it comes to the water drops, it will be very nice to have some glue where you can move the pieces around, or else you will only have one chance to make them look mirrored. Now all the details are glued on the mask, and if any pieces are sticking out, you can cut them off. And yeah, be careful with the glue. Before we start on painting, we are going to add some wood glue onto the mask. Wood glue is used as a primer and sealant to create a smooth surface to work on before painting your props. And it prevents the foam from soaking up the paint. It also makes the EVA foam more sturdy and less prone to damage. I use three layers of wood glue with a two hours gap between each paint. And then I let it dry overnight. And this is how it turned out. The base coat is going to be black, and for that you can use a spray paint. Make sure everything is covered. The paint I used needed 2 hours to dry, before I could add another layer. For the second layer I'm using some silver metallic paint. I wanted to have a metallic look, but the bottle had other plans. It spat some huge clumps of paint out, so I had to cover the entire mask in silver. But since that was not the look I was going for, I grabbed the black bottle and started mixing the two of them. I was worried that it might ruin the mask because the black one needs to dry for 2 hours while the silver one dries instantly. But luckily nothing happened and I mixed them 8 times before I got the look I was going for. I let the mask dry overnight so I was completely sure that every 8 layers was completely dry before I added the shadows. I'm gonna add some shadows on the mask, it's up to you if you want to do this or not. Grab some black acrylic paint, a small pencil and some tissues. Then it's up to you on where you will add the shadows. I added them around the edges on every details. Use the tissue to dab on the paint, it will leave a much nicer effect. Here you have the difference between a shadow mask and a not shadow mask. The right side is painted. The final thing we're gonna do is to add the black ribbons. I cut mine so they will have a length around 20 centimeters, and then burn the edges so they wouldn't start fraying. And then I'm gonna add them with some hot glue. Try on the mask before gluing them on. You need to figure out yourself where the ribbons should be glued, since it will be different from person to person because we all have different head shapes. When you have done that, you can glue them on one at a time. You don't have to use as much as I did, I went a little overboard with that. Wait until one side is completely dry before you glue on the next. And then we are done!
Thank you so much for watching. I really do hope that you understood what I was doing and if there's some parts where you have no clue on what to do, then don't be shy and leave a comment. I will try explain it as best as I can. Overall, I am so satisfied with how this turned out and it didn't took long to do either. I hope this video will help you to create your own mask or maybe for some other cosplay projects. If you liked the video, please give it a thumb up and if you want to see some of my other videos, feel free to visit my channel. And if you like my content, don't feel shy to hit the subscribe button. If you want to see my cosplay pictures, links to my other social media accounts are in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.